Okay. One second, Miss Howard, one second. It's still loading on YouTube. All right, we're ready to go. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Dunbar Go Team Meeting, where we will follow the agenda as it has been emailed to you and publicly noticed. I am pleased to call this meeting of the Dunbar Go Team to order. Our first order of business is to call roll. The secretary will now take roll. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Okay, Mr. Sessoms. Present, Present. absent. Present. Angela Hart. I see her picture at the top corner. Larissa Morris. The Tiffany George. Talicia Mangum. Doris Howard. Present. Nikki Cawthon. I see her name. I'm not present. Howard Grant. Present. Chris Brown. And myself, Tanisha Evans. Present. This team will only be able to take official action if a quorum is present. Ms. Evans, is there a quorum present? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Our first order of business is to approve the agenda. This has been provided to you, and I will now put that up. I want you to please take a moment to review the agenda and tell me if there are any changes to the agenda that needs to be made. Give me one second. And are we able to see the agenda, the main agenda? Yes. yes. Okay. So may I have a motion to approve? And I'm going to actually stop sharing now. If everybody has taken, they had the opportunity to take a look at the agenda for today. Okay. I move to approve the agenda as uh, presented. Okay, is there a second? I second. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. And all opposed, please say nay or raise your hand. Any abstentions, please identify yourself and raise your hand. I didn't hear anything from Ms. Cotton and Ms. Hart. Okay, is there all in favor of approving the agenda for today? Please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. No statement is, a, is an approval. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They Because they, they, they're either going to say nay or nothing. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, also, let me also interject, team. We need to make sure that your votes are counted because this is recorded. So, uh, even if I mean, we just need you to come off of mute and just say aye, or if you want to, you know, give a thumbs up on your screen, that is fine as well. Uh, also, if you know how to add the uh, raise your hand symbol on the Zoom box as well, that'll be acceptable. We just need to make sure. Um, Ms. Evans can record all the A's, the nays, or abstentions accurately. 
Yes, or you can even type it in the chat box. Or you can type it in the chat box. Thank you, Ms. Evans. So for just for record, um, can we please um, take the vote on that motion again? Okay. All, so, those, all those in favor? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have a thumbs up here. Okay. All those opposed, we say nay. Okay, or raise your hand. Any abstentions, please identify yourself or raise your hand. Okay, we will review. We will now move on to approve the meeting minutes from our last meeting. The minutes have been provided to you and I will pull those up right now. Please take a look. Okay. That's the agenda um, again. The, I'm sorry. Give me one second. I apologize. And Ms. Howard, actually, those minutes were posted on the website. So everyone okay. had access to those. So we don't have to share the actual minutes. We can just go ahead and move forward with the uh, motion. And okay. I move to approve the minutes. Okay. Thank you so much. And let me. I second. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Miss Evans. Okay. Thank you, everyone. All opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? Please identify yourself or raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. Those are approved. We will now move on to our, and hold on for one second, you all, please. Our discussion items. Thank you, Mr. Sessions. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Again, um, this is the critical time in our GO team, and it is now budget season. Um, so I will be sharing some information, um, formal information about our budget. So this is gonna be an opportunity for the GO team to see where we are in terms of the budget and to provide feedback. All right, so here are our norms. Um, basically, this is a GO team meeting. Only members of the team may participate in this discussion. Any members of the public present are here to quietly observe. We will follow the agenda as noticed to the public and stay on task. We invite and welcome contributions of every member and listen to each other. We will respect all ideas and assume good intentions. All right, in terms of our GO team budget development process, you'll see that we first started with our strategic plan and that is our roadmap and our role. It is the direction, priorities, and our vision for the present and the future. Uh, we've already accomplished the data review at the beginning last semester. We did a strategic plan review. And on last time we had our budget parameters and strategic priorities. So now we are at the step four with budget choices. Here's an overview of our GO team budget process timeline. And as you can see, we are at step five in terms of the GO team feedback session. Um, so this is the ongoing session if necessary, but I don't think it'll be ongoing. And then as you can see, the latter parts, we will have next have our step six, where I'm, uh, myself will have our staffing conference with the district. Um, and then finally, I will bring that back to you for the final vote by the GO team. All right, budget feedback meeting. What is the what? The GO team feedback session should be scheduled for the principal to provide an overview of the school's draft budget for the GO team members and the general public. Why? This meeting provides an opportunity for GO teams to discuss how the school's budget has been allocated to support the programmatic, uh, programmatic needs and key strategic priorities. When meetings must be held in February before staffing conferences may be combined with other allocation meetings as needed if the GO team has completed strategic plan updates and ranked strategic priorities. All right, and this is a review from the last meeting. So we have our top five priorities beginning 
with our weekly data reviews and PLCs focusing on data and reviewing that data to inform instruction. Next, you'll see a focus on literacy and math instructional best practices as Dunbar is continuously working towards attaining 50% or more of students proficient in ELA and math by way of the Georgia Milestones and our Universal Screener Map. Third, we have our intervention in small group instruction where we have dedicated time for students to receive specific interventions and or enrichment for personalized learning in ELA and math. For IB, International Baccalaureate, school-wide implementation, as that is our signature program, IB is the school signature program that informs the philosophy of learning and learning methods that encompass all content areas, including ELA, math, science, and social studies. After school Saturday tutorial, ensuring that students are receiving maximized opportunities for remediation and or enrichment after regular school hours. Next, we have the descriptions of our strategic plan categories. So the next documents that you'll see will have headers. And so this is the description of those headers. Um, priorities will include FY25 funding priorities from the school strategic plan ranked by the order of importance. So there'll be those five things. Number two is based on our alignment to the APS-5. Those are the APS-5 signature components that drive everything we do in terms of instruction at schools in Atlanta public schools. Third is strategies, laying out specific objectives for school improvement. And then the request is the ask. This is what needs to be funded in order to support that strategy. And of course, the amount, what is the cost associated with the request? All right, so let's look at the first section. This is gonna be our strategic plan breakout. So the first one in reference to weekly data reviews, you'll see the APS-5 associated. The strategy is gonna be professional development and teacher support and coaching. And the request is the literacy coach and the math coach. And so I want you to see these amounts in the amount column. These are based on compensations, average salaries. That does not mean this is what the people in my building make. And these are the average salaries that we have for that position posted on uh, compensation on the website. But you'll see the different uh, average salaries for instructional coaches and the total at the top. So 130,540 with a total of 26180 for those two positions. The next priority is focusing on literacy and math instructional best practices. You'll see the area for APS-5, and then the strategies will be um, the science of reading, professional learning, and support, along with the ELA math teacher supports and student interventions. So that's going to include an additional science of reading coach and one master teacher leader. And you'll see the salaries associated with that. And keep in mind, Go Team, that because we want to make sure instruction and academic achievement is priority, you're going to see uh, positions that are directly related for that purpose. Intervention and small group instruction, you'll see the APS-5 uh, focus area. Our strategy for intervention and small group instruction will be ELA and math student intervention and enrichment, social emotional learning, and focusing on attendance, homeless, and family supports. So you'll see the positions for reading specialist, math specialist, counselor, and social worker. For IB, of course, that's our signature program you will see a strategy of transdisciplinary curriculum support, which encompasses unit planning for all content areas. That will include one signature coach, and you will see the salary associated there. And then finally, just funds for our after school or Saturday tutorial, and that is an hourly position. So that would encompass a minimum of one coordinator, seven teachers, and one paraprofessional. So you will see that is $35 an hour for that. So next, you will see the Title I Family Engagement Fund. So this is the amount that was allocated for family engagement. Um, and so for that allocation, you will see the priority of building literacy and math capacity for parent home support. We're going to look at um, our strategy of literacy and math home strategy parent workshops, and which will include the purchase of materials and supplies and take home curriculum resources for our parents. So you'll see that amount of $5,840 there. And then the next one is building capacity for parenting skills and education access. Uh, we want to, for that strategy, we want to look at parent education workshops, but that will also include a request 
of ordering parent newsletters with a subscription and providing transportation for any parent-child field trips as well. All right, so this screen just kind of gives you a snapshot of all things that are in our budget and the categories, and there'll be a graph, a circle graph that I will share afterwards. But if you look at these different line items, you'll see instruction, and you'll see this amount um, here for the account 1,000, you'll see a $3,108,026 amount. That is gonna be pretty much teachers, teachers in the building. The next one is gonna be pupil services for 2,100. And I also listed um, those specific positions for those accounts so you can get an idea of where those funds are going. So for 2,100, that's gonna be like our parent liaison, our psychologist, our nurse, our interventionist for MTSS, our social worker and in school, um, representative as well uh, in school monitor and school suspension monitor. So that's going to be the twenty one hundred for that five hundred ten thousand dollar amount. The next one is going to be twenty two ten for improvement of instructional services. That's going to be our three instructional coaches and two specialists, one reading specialist and one math specialist. For twenty two twenty educational media services, that's our one media specialist. For school admin for 2400, that's going to include the principal, assistant principal, the clerk, the secretary, and business manager. So that will represent this amount for administration. For maintenance and operations, these are going to represent our two custodians and our site manager that works on making sure our infrastructure is safe, clean, and organized. And then finally, you'll see amount for transportation. That's our school buses for field trips and other educational trips as well. So this graph just basically summarizes what I just went over, um, pointing out the critical pieces. As you can see in this blue 61%, that is focused on instruction, which is where we want the majority of funds to go in our budget. The next biggest part of the pie is gonna be orange, which will be pupil services, also going towards students. So right now that's 71% of the pie. And then in the gray, we have 13%, which is focused on the improvement of instructional services. So that's 61, 10, 71, that's 84% of the pie. So that's the majority, of course, uh, over three-fourths of the pie focused on student services. Um, next, you'll see in the blue educational media services, that's media center. In the green, that's school admin that I mentioned in the previous slide, 11%. Then we have maintenance and operations and transportation. So that explains the pie. But I uh, want to make sure we share our due diligence and making sure the majority of our funds go to student achievement, as that is the area of the biggest need. So now we're at the discussion of reserve and holdback funds. So the reserve is almost like a cushion. So the reserve is not something that we actually get to allocate for, but they want to make sure that if we get those funds during FTE, that we're able to make sure we're ready to spend. So it's $51,419. That is the amount that we get if we make our basic enrollment projection, which is 207 students. Pretty confident that we'll make that goal. So once we are um, getting our 207 students in enrollment, then we'll get this additional 51,000. But what are we going to do with that 51,000? So the first area that we'll see here is a strategy of maximizing student attendance. And so a portion of the funds will go towards student incentives and print materials, as well as staff attendance incentives for staff as well. So see those amounts there. Next, you'll see intervention and small group instruction. So we also see that there's a good need for technology and devices. We have one-to-one -one devices for all of our students, but we wanna make sure we have some loaner devices for home devices, for those special situations where it may be a student who's temporarily at the school, who may just be displaced and they may need a device at home, or maybe some kids who really need some intensive support and we want them to be able to take a device home. So we have some funds set aside for that, for tablets and Chromebooks. And finally, we want to make sure we provide after-school enrichment opportunities. So we want to make sure we can actually fund those clubs like band, like cheerleading, like the art club, Spanish club, uh, reading bowl, math club. So we want to have stipends for those staff members working with those students. All right, so here's where we look at um, the summary of position changes to support the strategic plan. So this is very important because based on the decline in enrollment projections, 
we were declined or are projected to reduce our enrollment by 50 students, 50 or more students. With that comes a negative balance on our budget of $370,000 um, for the most part. And so with $370,000 in the negative, we have to balance the budget. So how do we balance the budget and still maintain those positions that are critical for student achievement and success? Um, so this is all preliminary. So these are things that are still up in the air, but these are things that we're looking at currently in terms of moving forward with the budget. So if we look at the created side, we're looking at creating a master teacher leader position. This position is not just a teacher that works with students, but their time is also shared in supporting teachers. Oftentimes we have novice teachers, new teachers that have been in the profession less than three years, they need additional support. So that will be part of the role for a master teacher leader. And they will work with ELA and or math. We're thinking of creating that position. Unfortunately, there are some positions that have to be removed or reduced. Uh, we call that some abolishments. So now we have our position for our clinical therapist. Currently, we have a full-time clinical therapist um, that we're looking at removing. Uh, we also have a full-time office clerk that we're looking at removing. Um, with the office clerk, we currently have a full-time secretary and a school business manager. Um, so in order to look at how we're going to really cut the budget to make sure we can make sure we um, can balance it out with that $370,000, we're looking at the clerk. And then we have a full-time gifted teacher also. And due to our gifted enrollment, we currently have about five students school-wide that are identified gifted. So we're looking at reducing that to a part-time gifted teacher where we will share that teacher with another school. So that teacher will work full-time in the district, but not full-time at Dunbar. They will come to Dunbar for half the week and another school for half the week as well. All right, so now it's hey, time for you guys to oh, go right ahead. Question, Mr. Mr. Sassen, Sassen, if, yes. if it's appropriate. Um, it with the clerk that's going to be a um, position that's going to be abolished, Will that person have an opportunity to work anywhere else within the school? Good question. And so with any abolishments that are taking place, um, we work very hard, myself and human resources, collaboratively to really look in other schools and other positions and see where they may actually have added positions. And those persons are giving priority to interview for those schools. Uh, okay. And so yeah. the persons that I mentioned in those roles, those are ex exemplary stellar employees and so i would definitely be doing my best to make sure they get a placement um at another school okay good, good. yeah you know times are hard so uh, thank you yes guys. yes there are schools that in my situation with dunbar in our situation where we had a negative reduction there are some schools that had an increase some some schools had an uptick of projected enrollments okay thank you you're welcome but this is the time to ask questions so this is our time to um, answer questions or talk about and discuss. So here are some questions to consider. Number one, are new positions and or resources included in the budget to address our major priorities? So I would like to say we did um, because we want to make sure we focus on instruction. Um, and it's also the mission and vision of our superintendent that we put as many of our dollars towards uh, leadership and skills that are directly responsible and directly impacting students. Do we know as a team the plan to support implementation of these priorities beyond the budget? What strategies will be implemented? Um, so, of course, we are living by not only the strategic plan, but we're living by the continuous improvement plan. And these are the basic uh, strategies that we're going to be using, focusing on that work. So, of course, those things would include certain stakeholders like the instructional coaches, specialists. We have a plan within our school improvement plan to make sure how we're focusing on steps to work towards making sure we're impacting student achievement and what trade-offs are being made in order to support these priorities. Um, so that was basically the last screen. Those are the trade-offs. Um, however, the work still has to get done. So even though uh, we may abolish a position like the clerk, that means we have to restructure those, those roles to our secretary and or business manager. So that work still um, takes place. How are district and cluster priorities reflected in this budget? Cluster priorities, what staff materials, et cetera, are dedicated to supporting our clusters priority. So we do have cluster funds um, that we use collaboratively. We just recently, last week, 
had our cluster uh, expo where our band also participated. So all the schools, elementary schools, middle school and high school uh, presented our artwork. And so that was taking place on last week at Maynard Jackson. So just those types of things, we try to do things together collaboratively to, collaboratively to bring all the families and students together with the Jackson cluster. Signature programs, what staff materials, et cetera, are dedicated to our signature program? Well, we have our IB signature coach and we will continue to have our IB signature coach supporting teachers and making sure that we still are accountable for all the criteria as being an IB World School. Are there positions our school will share with another school? Yes, so based on the preliminaries, we would ideally share the gifted teacher with another school. Um, currently, we already share our psychologists uh, with other schools and we share our special ed lead teacher with another school. So we already currently have some uh, positions already in the budget from previous years that we are sharing. But the gifted teacher would be the one added as a shared itinerant position. All right, before I go back to that slide, any other questions? Dr. Grant, you had a good question. So this is your chance for any questions. And keep in mind, these are preliminary. Nothing is edged in stone as of yet. Uh, I am still working actively with my associate superintendent um, and making sure we're making the best decisions um, as there are still some tweaks here and there with the budget that might be made. But of course, those things will be brought to you um, and made aware so that you can actually vote after the staffing conference. All right, where are we going? Our next meeting is the budget approval meeting. What? During this meeting, we will review the budget, which should be updated based on feedback from the staffing conference, associate superintendents, and key leaders. After review, GO teams will need to take action, ergo vote on the budget. So I need us to make sure we're at this next GO team meeting that we schedule after the staffing conference in March. So we have to have it after the 29th of February, but before March 15th. So we, uh, after this presentation, Ms. Howard, let's lead and make sure we have a date that everyone can agree upon so that we can have quorum and vote accordingly. And then why principals will present the final budget recommendations with the GO team approval. And then when all approval meetings must be held after staffing conferences, like I said, but before March 15th. What's next? Um, staffing conferences for Dunbar is actually going to be February 29th. And then, of course, March, we have our final GO team meeting before March 15th. All right. And that is it for my budget presentation. Back to you. Question, Ms. Mr. Sessoms. Yes. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, the last meeting, didn't we, didn't we already vote on the next date for March 7th? If that's what you have in the records, that's fine. I just want to make sure we put it out there. Yes, the next meeting is um, scheduled for March 7th. That's the one we voted on with Ms. Um, Jacoby. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. And I'll I'll send out reminders too, of course, but okay, thank you. March 7th. So it's changed for March 28th originally to March 7th. Right, because March 20th will be way too late. Okay. Yeah, that'll be after the 15th, and we want to have everything voted on. And, and so March 7th is great because if for some reason something happens, March 7th, like another snowpocalypse or whatever, that we can have time to reschedule before the March 15th date. So March 7th sounds good. Team, what do you guys think? Because we need you guys to be present. That will work for me. Whether I'm here or not, I'll, I'll make sure I log in. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and then I, I had one question, um, and it's probably going to be baked in someplace, but what about um, any student incentives for attendance? You know, I'm big on attendance and, and getting kids to school. Um, is that baked in someplace or is that based on um, co external contributions? Um, great question. So that is one of the things that we're really putting 110% into at, at Dunbar in terms of attendance. We have a 10 days in a row campaign um, because when kids are at school 10 days in a row, it really increases our school CCRPI attendance. 
Um, and so we're doing a couple of things. We have our whole child intervention team and we track students. So we see what students are not coming to school and we call them every day when they're absent and we contact those parents and we really incentivize our kids when they make that goal for 10 days in a row. Uh, we have a campaign where we every month for attendance, we have the perfect attendance kids and the kids who had one day absent good attendance. Uh, we have a big celebration for them every month. Last month for February, uh, was it the end of January? Or what month are we in? It was at the end of January. We had the game truck. So we'll have the game truck. We had two game trucks come out and the, all the kids who earned that attendance incentive got to participate with the game truck. We'll have the game truck again at the end of this month for those kids. Uh, every month we have a, a pep rally called the First Friday Huddle and we give them certificates for good attendance and perfect attendance. We give them gift cards to so like Wendy's, those kinds of things. And then we have a prize table um, which is courtesy of one of our partners with Walmart. And we have a prize table and they come and get a prize as well. Um, so yes, absolutely. We are focused on attendance. Um, it is a part of CCRPI as well in terms of us and our, our composite score. And so, yes, we definitely incentivize not only the kids, but we're incentivizing the parents. And so when we send certificates home to the kids, the parents get a little goodie bag as well, almost like a candy gram as well. And then coming up this at the end of this month, we have the principal's attendance challenge. So parents who have kids that have good attendance with no more than one day absent, and they're at school on time before 745, and they don't get picked up before 230, they will be entered into a drawing. And so for each grade level, K through five, we'll have a winning parent and child combo, and we're going to order some really big prizes, gift baskets, things of that nature as well. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I just want you all to know that is something that really works. I'm upstairs with um our um two through five, and it's something that the kids really talk about, especially the game truck. A lot of some kids weren't able to go, so they're really trying to do that 10 day attendance. So thank you so much, Mr. Sessoms. Um for leading those initiatives. Are there any more discussion about the draft budget? Are there any more questions? And thank you, Dr. Grant, for your questions as well. Are there any more questions about the draft uh, budget or anything, any feedback, any discussion we want to have now? Okay. So we will now move on to our information, on to information items. This includes the principal's report. All right, you guys, uh, thank you for coming once again. A um, couple of things and updated. So the 21st Century Grant, I know that was um, one of the goals for the GO team. And so just giving you guys updates on that, that was submitted uh, and signed off by Dr. Battle and sent to the state. So that was submitted on behalf of Dunbar Elementary School. So I'm hoping and keeping my fingers crossed that we'll hear word about that soon. And so, of course, with that 21st Century Grant, we'll be able to fund our own after school program. Monday through Friday throughout the school year and even throughout the summer. Um, so that will give an opportunity for our parents to have a place where that's not only child care, but their kids will be getting formal instruction and enrichment as well. So the 21st Century Grant, you guys keep your fingers crossed and let's hope that we are announced to receive that. Other than that, it is declaration time for the GO team. So based on um, declarations, we're looking for two parent declarations and two staff member declarations. And so um, make sure you publicize that as well. Um, parents, there were a lot of parents today at the Black History Program. So we did reach out to and make sure we announced that to our parents that were in attendance at the Black History Program. Um, but we will need two declarations by the end of February. I believe February 28th is the deadline for declaration so that we can make sure we vote in our two parents and two instructional staff members for the GO team for next year. Um, other than that, um, our playground, we just got a brand new playground at the top of the hill recently. So that has been completed and we actually have a Kaboom um, partnership that's actually adding even more playground equipment. So coming from when I first got to Dunbar, where we only had an open grassy field and an old dilapidated uh, playground with the city of Atlanta Recreation Department. So now we have really upgraded to an outdoor classroom, a new playground, and more equipment to come create Dunbar as a safe haven and a safe place 
for our kids to collaborate and play um, throughout the school day. And of course, we have the eight foot fencing that encompasses everything to keep it safe after hours and throughout the weekends as well. Um, that is it for my updates. Uh, but thank you once again, Go Team. I appreciate it. Um, and I look forward to uh, continuing this work and finalizing the budget, which is a very big task. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. So um, thank you, Mr. Sessions, for giving us all that information. I want to remind um, all GO team members to please, if you haven't completed your budget training on the Ellis platform, please complete it if you need any assistance. Um, we are up there. I am up there every day. Um, God willing, I'll be there every day. If you need any assistance, I can help you with that as well. Um, if you know, logging on or what have you. Um, does anybody have any additional announcements? Oh, and one more thing, just to remind you, and I know he's already said it, uh, but, but thank you for the next go team meeting again will be March 7th. OK. OK, so are there any additional announcements that we want to share? OK, so we have reached the end of our agenda. Is there any additional business at this time? We uh, have none. So may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Move to adjourn. I second. Okay. I'll second. Oh, all right. All right. All right. All in favor. Quick on the adjournments. <laughs> all, right. all right. Hannah say aye, but I think everybody motioned. So, no. Okay. So, thank you all. Is there anybody opposed? Please raise your hand. Okay. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, you all, for logging on. Have and a great I one. Have a good day. All right. Bye -bye. All right. See y'all later. Okay.